Hi everyone, I just wanted to make a quick video um, to show you how to get started with Darktable. Um, I'm not a professional photographer, I've recently got into Darktable so I'm also learning but I thought why don't I put together a movie that would help people use Darktable for the first time. So first things first. If you go to the Darktable website, there are a bunch of resources available that will help you get started. Um, this is the best place uh, to get started. The user manual is very um, comprehensive. It shows everything about um, the 1.2 version, which is the latest stable version. Also, if you click just on the resources button itself, there are some more resources other than these two main resources, which are actually really useful. Um, there's a book here that's written by some other guys. It's a little bit out of date, but it's you know it's it's still really cool. Um, obviously, there's the wiki pages and the user manual here, but also down here. It took me a while to find these. Are the screencast tutorials that have been done by Pascal de Brin, and these are great. Um, they're generally for an older version, um, most of these ones, but they're a really great place to get started. Um, they tend to go sort of, they don't cover, you know, beginning to end working with a photo, but they tend to cover each separate um, functionality. Um, so if you're really interested in particular functionalities or, you know, how, how to use particular areas of the software, these are really great videos to watch. They're OG videos, so you download them and watch them. They're not on YouTube. Obviously, he's gone and done uh, extra things when new features have been added but the last uh, videos that he's done were for Darktable 1.0 which is uh, a little bit out of date now. Um, we're at 1.2 and the development of 1.3 is getting quite advanced and that's got quite a few new cool features. I'll be doing my videos on the latest git head um, so you know this will include all of the latest features but uh, will probably you know be subject to change. So anyway, let's go back to Darktable. This is the view that you see when you when you load up Darktable. You can see here the version that I'm using. Um, you'll probably be seeing a 1.2 here, and you'll you know some there will be some differences. But once 1.4 comes out, these features will probably be there. Anyway, that's kind of irrelevant. So when you come in, you start off in the light table mode. The light table mode is basically just a uh, like an overview of all of the files. That you have. It's a way of quickly looking through the files to find the ones that you want to work on. Once you find the file you switch into the darkroom and you make uh, your development of the image. So the first thing you need to do, you can see that there are no images in any collection. I've reset the uh, all of the settings of Darktable so this is at, as it is out of the box. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import a folder of files. Now I've just copied the files um, onto I just copy them into my photos directory and I you know use a date and then I give a description of what they are and then I just go and bring in each directory um, separately like a roll of film if you like anyway I've created a uh, dark table demo directory here with a few images that I've taken prior um, I've selected these because they you know will be good for, to demonstrate a particular part of dark table or whatever so I have opened that um, roll and you can see that there are a bunch of images here. So when you first bring the images in you can see that they're all just listed here on the dark table. There's a few different uh, few different ways to to view them. You can use a zoomable light table which you know um, has a set number of rows and moves them around and stuff. I like the file manager one myself. Now you can see that I just zoomed out you can either do that here by changing this number or by dragging this this slider here to zoom or you can hold down the control key and use the mouse wheel to zoom in all the way or all the way out you can you know zoom quite a long distance um, so that's cool I'm not going to go into too many details about Lightroom view um, you can press tab to get full screen um, tab again to zoom back out. That, that just hides these panels on the side. But let's have a quick look. Um, image information I like to have open. This gives you a sense of you know what is the image, how was it shot, you know what is the um, f-stop and the ISO and all of those sorts of things. Um, 
there's a bunch of useful things over here that allow you to do things like if you've developed an image you can copy the settings from one image to another or you can copy the settings or selected settings that you've used uh, from one image to a whole bunch of other images um, you know let's say you've got a bunch of similar images and you want to go and change the white balance on all of them you can do that by using say the copy function oops the copy function of the history stack um, obviously this image is unaltered but let's say I go into this image I by double clicking obviously to get into the dark table mode um, let's say I set a white balance to be daylight because this shot was so was shot in full sun and I go back to the light table mode I can then copy just the white balance for example and then I can paste it into this other image and that will change the white balance on that, that image you can see the white balance changed slightly so once you've got all this you want to um, you know do some processing on an image um, I just held control and moved the mouse wheel again to to zoom in and out um, there's a bunch of different um, shortcuts that you can use and you can find out what they are through here um, just have a, have a scroll around and you'll see um, what functionality has has key bindings there's quite a few in here um, obviously I'm I don't know, I don't think there's a cheat sheet available online anywhere, but uh, I'm part way through working on one, so maybe my cheat sheet will appear online at some point, but in the meantime you can always find out what the main um, the main shortcuts are in here. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of different options in here which can be quite useful. For example, um, these ones I always like to change because I have a big enough monitor that these values are too small. Um, you'll see that if I go into the dark table mode and press tab and then zoom in. See how it's cut off on the edges? That's because that's limited in those settings. Um, so one of the things I'll often do is, is change that so that I can get the full image when I press tab in here. Uh, so anyway, let's say, let's do, you know, like a simple edit so you can see from beginning to end um, what I would typically do with an image. This is going to be really basic uh, edit. It's you know I'll go probably and do separate um, videos where I do in-depth edits of like say macro image or you know let's say I want to make a really dramatic cloud view or I want to make you know a really sharp popping image or straighten particular things. Um, you know make this really crisp so that the detail pops out at you or you know have to deal with large dynamic range between the bright points and the darker points like I said I'll go through and make separate uh, videos on those um, but in the meantime I thought I would just do a simple edit let's start with this stained glass window which is in Christchurch Cathedral in Oxford so you can see this image it's got cool lighting that's coming in from you know probably some floodlights or some some lights behind here but the thing that really caught my eye was these uh, these spider webs, wispy spider webs above the uh, above the image. Now it's not an amazing image, but let's see if we can make something interesting out of it. Now the first thing I'm going to I prefer this this mode of the uh, histogram here. There's various different linear modes or whatever. I, I prefer linear because this shows me really this image is is underexposed, but it's kind of you know what I'm looking for. So. Let's have a quick look. Is this overexposed or not? A little bit. So let's have a quick look, see if we turn on the shadows and highlights module whether it makes it look better or worse. Mm. Obviously there's a lot of noise in this image. It's quite high ISO, 3200. This is on a 5D Mark III. Yeah, I don't think I like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some basic edits. I think the white balance is alright. Um, I'll go into this in a bit more detail. The coolest one is the spot white balance. Um, now if you, there's a white area in the image you can select the spot white balance and you can select the white area in the image. Um, 
and it'll it'll white balance off that. Now that can be it can be a white area, it can be a grey area, um, or a black area. Generally, white or grey is best, and it should be a neutral white or grey. Obviously, this is a yellow stone, so it's given a really weird cast to the image. I'm going to leave it on the camera white balance, but there's you know various options in here. You can also manually change the temperature or or so forth if you you know if you're looking for a particular um, effect. So let's go back. Oh, well, by the way, you can reset uh, things to their original values by using the reset parameters. Uh, another thing that you should be aware of is there are a bunch of modules now. They're getting more and more modules all the time, but if they're not enabled, you won't see them in these groups. I mean, these are various different groups for various different uh, types of module, and if they're not there, you can show them by, let's say, uh, the denoise profiled is one of the most useful tools, which I'll use in a moment. I'm going to enable that, and it's coming up in the correction group. You can see that here. By default, in the later versions of Darktable, if you open one module within a group, all of the other modules will be closed. You can change that behavior in here if you prefer to have these all open. Now, let's go back to developing this image. First thing I'm going to do is, I don't really like, I mean I really like these these elements here and I want to draw attention to this. So I'm going to start with a crop and I'm going to see if I can bring these elements out. I'm not so interested in this black stuff at the top. So let's first go to the crop. You can see if I mouse over now I have some handles here. Now I'm going to just drag these down until I like the composition of the image a bit more. That's cool. That will do for now. Now the other thing is these don't seem to be quite straight with this mod module open. I can right click on the image and I can draw a line that will enable me to straighten it. So let's just see what I like for a composition. Notice that I can also add some guides. Rule of thirds, cool. You know, this is fine. This is not, this is not high art or anything. Okay, so we can double click on this or we can close the module and that will apply the crop. Obviously nothing in Darktable is destructive so we can get back to where we were by closing and opening the module again. That resets everything and we get the, the view back. Next thing I was going to do was I was going to... let's play with the exposure. Typically with an image the first thing you would do is come in you would play with the exposure. Now this is a high dynamic range image so I'm not going to boost the um, Let's put on the warning for over under exposure. I'm not going to boost the exposure on the top side because you can see that would just blow the whole window out. <coughs> sure, it would expose better for the for the this stuff, but I don't care about that stuff. So let's double click on the slider again. That resets the value to what it was before. And what I might do is boost the black a little because that make the image a little more dramatic. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is see if I can fix some of this noise. I like the, the denoise profiled because that contains information about the particular camera and um, well, the particular sensor involved. So this will generally give you the easiest um, way of, of fixing noise. Um, now some people like to use two copies of this. You can uh, find out how best to do that by going to the user manual. Let's have a look, see if we can find the correction group. Okay, so there's various different ways to do denoising. The equalizer is one. Let's see if we can find the profiled. Denoise profile. So we can see that there's a couple of different modes here, wavelet mode and uh, non-local means. And a lot of people like to use two. So here we go, non-local means combined with lightness and wavelet with color. So wavelet's better for color noise and non-local means is better. So I'm just going to use non-local means, I'm going to turn that on. 
I mean, you can just you know do basic stuff as it is. There, you can see that the. the uh, anyway, you can play with these. I'm no expert on them at the moment. So there we go. That's that's going to give us less noise in our image. Again, it depends how. Um, obviously, you can uh, blend these in and out in terms of the opacity. Blend mode normal. Let's say I want to sort of half cancel the noise. I can use that do that with a blend, or I can reduce the strength. Um, you can see here that if now if I turn this off and then turn it back on again, you can see the difference in the effect there. So you can see this also slows my working down. Uh, on this computer, I don't have a GPU that uh, will allow acceleration with OpenCL, so it's quite slow once you turn on something um, as heavy as the profile denoise. And, you know, turn it off until you've finished and then add it at the end. Okay, I was just wondering whether there's anything else that I would normally use. I've done white balance, I've done crop and rotate. Oh, the other thing that you might might want to try fiddling with is the uh, is the tone curve. Obviously, you can non-linearly boost things. So you can see the effect that this is having. It's moving my sort of darker tones towards the middle. Okay, quite like that, but now my darks, my lowest uh, values are a bit too bright. I can either pull this towards the right to darken the blacks back up again. This is exactly equivalent to changing the exposure. Um, dragging the blacks, you can see it clips the blacks there. Makes no difference in the end result. Anyway, I'm quite happy with that image now. So let's say I want to output the JPEG. I switch back to the light table mode, I select the image that I want to export, and then I export the selected. Now I, this is on the default. You can see that if you mouse over this, it'll tell you the various different ways that you can name the files when you export them. I personally like the file name. So what is that? It's just file underscore name. Um, and it'll just get a .jpg. Uh, added to the end, depending, well, it'll get the uh, relevant uh, file name, file ending added to it. I'm going to export an 8-bit JPEG, you know, 85 is probably fine for uh, online stuff. If you're doing really high quality print, you might want it higher, but I'm just going to use 85. You can restrain the maximum size. Here, if there's a particular, you know, let's say you wanted it to fit on a screen, you could make it 1920 by 1080, and then if it was a portrait image, it'd be restrained a bit smaller than if it was a landscape, but it'd always show full size on on a you know regular HD screen. Um, that'll all do. So now I'm just going to hit uh, the export button, and now if I open up the folder, Darktable demo folder. Um, here we go, here's the folder. You can see these are my original raw files. Now these are the ones that have that have been modified have a sidecar file. This is where uh, Darktable keeps all of its uh, settings files. And you can see here that it's just a an XML file. Uh, you can see that we've used... Um, oh, I'll leave you to uh, enjoy the XML yourself. Uh, and then they come out in the Darktable exported folder. Here's the here's the image that we just created. Still a bit noisy. So there's you know plenty more work that I could do on this image or or any of the other images, but this was just a, a demonstration of like I said the basic features of Darktable. I'll probably go and do some more videos uh, working on particular images. This wasn't a particular strong image, but I'll uh, I'll see if I can find some good images that I've taken, and we can do uh, some particular edits on them. All right. Well, that's about it for my for my demo. Um, stay tuned for some more videos.